the second match of day one here in Vancouver for these teams. Argentina playing from left to right in their traditional white and baby blue hoops. Les bleus dans les maillots bleus. Their blue jerseys for France. Penalty against Argentina early on at the breakdown. As we said, a French team that started so well in that match against South Africa. Up 19-0 in the first half. Looking so fluid, and then it all came apart in the second half. Tackle. Tackle complete. The knees on the ground. Behind them he off. hasn't released the ball. It's a funny call there. Yeah, I think the referee deciding he had, he, he had released it. Osadjuk just getting back onto it very, very quickly, getting the turnover. Uh, and Argentina, good defensive set there. It's interesting, they got um, Moneta in the middle of the field for that just initial stable, defensive clear, okay? set. So it would be interesting stable. to see if yep. from those kickoffs any teams look to exploit the fact he's in the middle and not on the edge, and maybe you can release a speedster against one of Argentina's big forwards. Gross. Of course, Marcos Moneta in the 13 jersey, the former Five. World Sevens Rugby Player set. of the Year. He is the danger man in any kind of space. They've got options both sides. They go with the flow. There is Manette on the ball. So fast. Usadzic, he's the power man. He keeps that ball alive. They're asking questions of the French right across the park. Mano, why was that mark? But they won't need him. Powering through Luciano Gonzalez for the Pumas. Gonzalez straightening up. But Argentina had a big, big overlap. But he has the power, he has the strength to get through these tackles and get over the line. It started from the scrum, so it's interesting because Mineta usually plays on the wing. From that center scrum, they line him up in the middle of the field. That means when he drags across, you've got three or four French defenders chasing him across the field. So then when Argentina come back, they do have that overload on the other side. So Argentina, a clever tactic of just switching up where they have their speed player, and it pays off there to get the opening score. And you've played against him many times. Luciano Gonzalez, only five foot nine, but bundles of power. Oh, yeah, you come him, you see him coming steaming at you. You know you've got to brace for a big contact. Um, yeah, brings it every single time. Not a tall player, but he brings his power in the contact. Well, there's a man who famously led his team to victory here just before COVID hit us. Santiago Gomez Cora, a great player, but also now a great coach. Since won another gold medal and lost in the final last week. There's Moneta with a touch. Can he get another one? Looking for the bounce. The Pumas world champions in football. And now Moneta showing his foot skills with a second try. I mean, that really is remarkable from Marcos Moneta. He did this last week too. The ball's bouncing up with three or four players right around. You think there's no way he's going to be able to get his hands on it. Somehow it does end up in his arms. And that time he falls down over the line. I mean, it's a great little delicate touch through. It's the second one's for Desmond. But then here, how on earth does that ball end up in Mark on Smanetta's hands rather than one of those French players? He does so, so well. I mean, his kicking skills really do differentiate him from a lot of the other speedsters on the circuit and lead to a lot of tries. He just does so well there under pressure. Madison, I suppose, a rematch of the FIFA World Cup final from Qatar. And once again, it's Argentina. Let's see if France can change the result. Half of this first half played, and Argentina's up by two converted tries. The second one to Marcos Mineta, your 2021 World Rugby Men's Sevens Player of the Year. Oh, the aerial work supreme from Argentina, but France has got their hands on it. Oh, and they're guilty of arriving. Perez goes off his feet, doesn't support his own weight. Yeah, just no, no Argentinian player coming in to contest the contact, and that means that when Perez flies in, not quite in control of his body weight as he enters the contact point, goes onto his hands, easy visual for the referee and it just puts France in an even bigger hole and will give Argentina the chance although they do miss touch on this kickoff so letting France off the hook there yeah some reprieve Perez taking it deep on his own try line offers to Logel he never goes down with the first tackler Jean-Tem Logel huge servant of this French sevens effort looking wide Paul Uretre. He's had a couple of very good weeks. And again, France guilty of falling off their feet. Jordan Seffro this time. Quick tap from Argentina. Short ball, it's Mark on. Way, and guess who? Right down Mark the middle. Way. The power, the pace of Luciano Gonzalez one more time. Exactly the same mistake in the breakdown from France, just not supporting their body weight in the contact point. And that just prevents you from pairing together. 
prevents you from being able to get any sort of momentum. Mineta dragging across the field, attracts defenders, and then Luciano Gonzalez straightening up, shrugs off the first defender, as he so often does, and has the power to get over the line. And for France, I mean, they had such a good first half of their first game, but that second half against South Africa, this first half against Argentina, have not been able to continue that momentum. And it's starting to put them a bit in a bit of a hole in this group yeah, now. Time off, please. Gonna have time off here. Some subs on the field. Gonzalez made his debut way back in 2017 in Wellington in the cake tin. Just a huge force. Time back on. Referee Brake Spear is gonna put time back on here. It's okay. Argentina happy to control the pace in there. They do have a, a kick clock that's counting down. So they'll take all that time. It's right at the end in the advertising signage here in Vancouver with two seconds left he kicks it Logel keeps it tries to keep it alive it's off his hand and will be in Argentina lineup Argentina throw Argentina throw yeah. and Argentina once again no, keeping please, possession please, please and touch. for France they just can't get their hands on the ball every time they've had the ball I think within one phase they've committed an infraction at the breakdown and that's prevented them from building any sort of momentum and Argentina have okay, punished them ruthlessly this. when they've had the ball in hand Palandini to throw in. Three man lineouts and sevens. Normally. Lifting pod. Again, Logel's pod does a better job for him, and he gets lifted right in front of that. This is crucial at the end of this first half for France to get back in the game. Ball in one hand by Jean Pascal Varac. Coming back. Logel ships it wide and early. Good pressure and line speed from Rodrigo Iscro. Takes away the space there from Jory Simon. Perez stumbling. He's lifted up by Osadzi, the man mountain. Now he's down, tackle complete. Short side. Ponan Rivad down, penalty against Argentina. The dying seconds of the first half here. Show and go, almost getting loose. Is Simon, he's just brought down Perez. He's taken a beating here in the first half. Earl Red slides across the front, but Argentina up to it in defense. It's a good one-on-one -on -one battle off the right foot. The help arrives inside. Still going, still swerving. He's kept it, and Perez has just got in front of him. Yeah, Brack just weaving across the field, and these teammates were just not sure about where he was trying to go. It looked like the first one-on-one -on -one matchup was the best opportunity. He had the ball with a lot of space on the outside, choosing to cut back on the inside, and that just yeah put his teammates in two mind crossing penalty and Argentina are able to take it half time high fives all around for the Pumas it's all Argentina up 21 points okay, will not on. be happy France as you said no real possession meaningful incursions into the Argentinian territory they'll need something quick and they're not going to get it from that kick that doesn't reach the 10 meter line that's an unfortunate mistake for Perez, and yeah, that really hurts France. You go into those halftime huddles, you have a big talk. We need to do this, we need Strong to do lines. that. We're coming out of it with urgency, with energy, and that just immediately deflates you at the beginning of the second half, pushes you, makes you, forces you to come up with that. Okay, we're not worrying about that. We've got to move on, focus on the next task, but it really kills that momentum you bring Same coming as out of the halftime. Okay? And even worse, tactically, that midfield scrum, you see options both sides, without it in behind the scrum. So dangerous. Set. And we saw Argentina score earlier in this game Come from a, a midfield scrum like that Jeff, with Mineta pulling over to the right hand okay. side. No movement for the ball. Time on. Crouch. Great shot midfield. You see all sorts of space to work in with all four of those French defenders in and around the scrum. See where they go. They come to the bottom of your screen. A kick and chase. It's a set move, a set play. Called and executed by Moneta. They don't get the bounce this time. And it's well cleaned up by Varian Pasquet. Well, even in sevens, possession is the king. And even though they backed up their own try line, this is an opportunity for France. Perez secures it. They go wide. Simon looking for the one-armed offload. Doesn't come off. And the youngster gets his hands on it. Varian Pasquet. Now the skip pass. It's going to bounce up nicely. Perez gritting his teeth, 
I think, intending to go on the outside, but knew he didn't have the beating of Luciano Gonzalez, and they've stolen the ball. Good wet. The one-handed off it doesn't go to hand, but it comes off. And I got to say, Augustin Fraga done a lot of work cleaning up the mess there. Five minutes to play. France, get the ball back. Two senior men on the outside. Perez is put into space. Looking for help inside. And this French side looks actually quite tired. It's a little bit humid and hot, even though we're in under the dome here. And I'm not sure what you think, Madison, but there's not a spark well, to the life. game right now. No, they do really look tired. I mean, Perez, he's Tied got off. some pace in the money. space in front of him. I think you'd usually see him put his head down and try and go for the corner there. But pulls it out and the poor pass. And you're right, France do look very tired. We can see there France sitting in seventh place. They know that they're in that battle for the top four, so obviously they've already qualified as the host nation, so probably not quite as important for them. But Argentina, they're in second place, but they're in the, they're at the top of it, but they're in the middle of that top four fight. So really, these games are so, so important, particularly with the French draw against South Africa this morning. It means that this whole pool could get very messy if results go a certain way. Yeah, draw always throws a wrench in things. We'll see South Africa the other side. They have a draw and a victory over Japan for their work here on day one in Vancouver. This is a Friday <laughs> evening here, just after 7 p.m. Nozel wants to go far. quickly. The referee wants, says it's too far away Prevent from the mark. The counter gone beyond first. And what's your take, Madison, on the, because the women are here, because it's a larger tournament, there's two games a day for three days. It's just a very different format. It is, and I mean, it presents different challenges, I think. You, uh, on the first day, I mean, actually, you're feeling pretty good. You've only got to go two games. You're flying. You've got energy. But as the tournament builds, you've got to do more warm-ups. You've got to do more um, kind of getting up in the morning. And that just adds soreness to your body. And good try here for the French, fighting through, getting their score. And now they've got to kick on. Game really has not gone well so far. But there's still four minutes in this match. They can get they can get very close to Argentina. Maybe they can come back. But even if they don't, every point is crucial. That was Logiel who lulled them into confidence and then probably revived the captain coming up for the try. Yeah, well struck from the French. It came from the mistake and it was Argentina committing the penalty for not supporting their body weight at the breakdown there. So we can see how it can go both ways. And now France, they have to kick on at the end of this match. They've got a big three minutes. I know they've got some tired bodies, but this yeah, next three minutes could decide their tournament. 14 points adrift. That's two converted tries. Possession so important. A high, high kick. Beautifully weighted. Logel's in the air. Who's knocking it where? It's fallen for the Argentinians. And the, really the man of the match in this one, Gonzalez. He powers forward for more yards, more possession. So fluid. Flying through it. Santiago Alvarez. Not the no. flash man in this Argentinian outfit, but does so much graft. On behalf of the speedsters like Moneta. Circling around Rodrigo Isgro. Perennial HSBC Dream Team man. And as I said, just before COVID. Francis stole the ball back. Off they go. Come back to that thought. Andy Timo's brought down. His foot is trapping the Quick ball. Penalty. His foot's trapping the ball. You heard Breakspear. They need okay, something quick. Finish. Just over two minutes to play here. That one doesn't go to hand. If he's going to come back, meters. they weren't back 10 meters. Yeah, France putting pressure on Argentina now, starting to break in behind. It was with their defense causing the turnover and then starting to get in behind. And two minutes now left on the clock. The French have really resurgent. And you can see that to start the game, uh, it was all French penalties giving Argentina opportunities. Now Argentina are committing those penalties. Okay, and that's allowed on. France to get back into this match and to start building some possessions. Here we go. The walking tactic of Jonathan Logel. It worked last time. Now he's off. Doesn't use the short run. In fact, he keeps it. So that's off the bench. Secures the ball. Uruguay, he's on too. Threatening the line, Jean-Pascal Barak. The second try of three required for France. 
Wow, France doing such a good job fighting back here. Argentina have taken their foot off the gas. They've allowed France to build it into this game, and the French have done a much better job with their accuracy and attack, being direct, taking the ball forward. And it's been so interesting for both South Africa and France. In each game, they've had a half where they were really off the pace, and then a half where they really controlled and had a fantastic match. And we'll see now. The French crucial conversion doesn't go over. So that's going to mean that they're going to have a very, very hard time coming, this, coming back and tying or beating Argentina in this game, but even so, they know that this point differential with South Africa could Time prove off. crucial this if both teams win their last game. So, lunch. for the French, another tie, another try in this match, even if it's not enough to tie Argentina, will be very, very this important. And something they desperately need. Okay, just relax Nine points. Just relax a second, said <laughs> our referee. Easy for him to say. He needs to clean the blood. Time is off. There's a little bit of blood that needs to be cleaned up. Yeah, so many options here pool play points available and we always knew when the draw was made in los angeles last weekend that this was going to be a big fixture and it's living up to it yeah i think there are a couple pools people were really looking at that could get very very spicy and this is definitely one of them for the french they love ready? to kick to jonathan logel yes, okay. on this Stand left hand side now, so spec oh going to the right so mixing it up but a big kick off here that just diffs a bit deep Again, hanging high. Advantage being played for Argentina. It was Always back within on the pressure, no advantage. By Graham Pasquet. Yeah, Pasquet just not quite able to get his whole body around. I think the kickoff drifting slightly deeper than the French would like. Uh, and that it is always a danger when a right footer turns to his right hand side is he's got to open his whole body up and the natural swing of your leg tends to take it to be a deeper kick uh, and so approved for the french there and that's going to allow argentina probably to see out the rest of this match and i think for them if they do what they need to do points differential isn't important but if they lose to south africa later it could be so we'll see if they go for another try here tobias wade in the 10 jersey fresh off the bench and brought in to introduce the ball in this scrum good shot of the Footwear into this artificial turf. Sajid almost bobbled that one. He knows his role is to take on the physical, and he does it well. Argentina happy just to grind down this clock. They've got 15 seconds to go. Finding some spaces. Kaman Schultz still driving. 29-year-old done his job there. The Hooters going to sound any second, and that means a ruck possession and ball off the field gets a win for Argentina. Off it goes. Alvarez puts the boots to it. And Argentina can celebrate a hardly contested match against the French. They win it 21 points to 12.